in Kansas City right now, or you're in Virginia? Nope. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm actually uh, in our in my remote office, which is here in Atlanta, where I live. So I, I manage our local government services team, which includes an office in Kansas City. Uh, we're headquartered as a company in DC, which is where I was this week. Hmm. Um, and so, but I normally work from my house here in Atlanta. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. So, I mean, the question for us here was to review the, the building. The, the idea there is that we have a, we're a nonprofit. Have you seen my TED talk, by the way? I did. I did. I was very impressed. And so that's why I was even more excited to speak with you briefly and learn more about what you're, yeah. what you're attempting to do. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we, maybe we can uh, get, get, get on the same page in terms of everything that's happening. So, so this house, so we're a nonprofit organization. We're going to be building these homes as affordable housing. So we developed this one model called, called Rosebud. And okay. you've seen the, have you seen the link to that? Just the, the... No, I haven't. I'm just hoping that Rosebud isn't fit inside of a snow globe, that it's actually bigger than that, right? Yeah, it's a little bigger. Okay. Uh, can I share my screen and show you? Yeah, please do. Okay, so this thing, um, well, let's see, that was, the, the document I sent yesterday was uh, the plan, this little plan review thing, so it's just this, uh, that's, that's okay. what we're talking about here. Okay. Um, foundation detail, just floor plan, basics, I mean, this is what it looks like, simple salt box. Okay. Um, yeah, so with this in mind, um, yeah, and we have, I mean, we're doing like full CAD and, and free CAD, so it's open source. We document everything absolutely fully. And this way, it's both individuals and professionals can do the build. So we're not assuming that, we're not just drawing up blueprints for a professional to take and run with and, and do that, but also for anyone who wants to do that to start a business, to, to build their own house as a DIY person. So we're really going to the like real long length to, in terms of documentation and user-friendly instructions. But okay. I think right now is, uh, so, so we've got this model that, that's being completed. Right now we're at the rough end stage on our site here. This is our experimental site, our headquarters. Uh, that we're building and, and on one side we actually wanted to get an inspector out here we're, we're actually an hour away from Kansas City we don't don't have building codes here so we don't even have a building department that we can go to right. to verify right. everything so on one side we wanted to get a third-party inspector to go through <laughs> the the rough the rough okay. phase with electrical plumbing but the other part okay. is just reviewing the documents that we do have we do have a lot of documentation and, and a few questions like on a um, since we're going to be doing the plumbing in a couple of in a few days here, I mean, there's, there's a couple of questions we've got on that. Uh, we do have an electrician coming in uh, for, for the electrical build, so we shouldn't have too many questions on that. But it's um, getting it basically getting third-party review. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, to answer your question, absolutely. We the closest that we are to you in the suburban case here would be Edgerton, which is not too far from. Um, where you are, but it really doesn't matter. We we operate out of uh, an office in downtown Kansas City, and we can of course drive out and do the do the inspections. Um, and so that by itself is fine. Um, we have a you know a building code official and in our KC office who can do the plan review and just kind of look at the plans and make sure that you've got everything covered. Um, the other the other thing I was wondering about too is part of what we do at IBTS. We're also a nonprofit and. Uh, one of one of our major service lines is working with the manufactured housing industry through our contract with HUD. And yeah. so I don't know if you saw anything about us, but you know, we actually go to the plants and do the QA and QC and all across the country. Um, and, and so what you're describing kind of lines up with that as well, because I think what you're looking to do is to uh, roll out a housing type that would be that would match local codes and would be because, as you know, the history of manufactured housing before that it was a mobile home and a lot of cities were hesitant to allow them and so it was there was some discrimination against them and so hud said well we have this national requirement the national standard you can go anywhere in the country and um because of ibts's work you're guaranteed that this will this will meet and preempt local construction codes i mean it's you know you're able to put a manufactured home here like where i live in georgia you can buy one from a from a manufacturer, you can have it installed and it will meet local codes because 
as you're describing, like after the rough end stage um, on a manufactured home, there is nothing to look at. So when it's delivered to someone's property, there's no way for a building inspector to go in behind the walls and open things up and see where the electrical conduits are and the plumbing and other things. So that's why we work at the manufacturing site uh, mm -hmm. at different mm -hmm. manufacturers across the country. So um, long story short, we can, we can do both things that you're mm -hmm. asking. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Now, how does this play out? So on one side, we are fully capable to do this on site because we're working with all the modules in the house, like you saw in uh, the CAD, oh, if I share my screen again, just to uh, share that again. Um, like what you see here is actually these, well, let me see, do I have, okay. Uh, all these are four by, four by nine modules on the first floor, okay. second floor, so it's highly modular. Now the point is that we can do this fully on site at the build site, so you get okay. the big, big trucks of lumber and set up a bunch of stations on workhorses. And actually, part of it is that we are planning on building these in five days, which means we do 24 person crews. So, for example, uh, 24 of these modules, which is effectively like the whole floor, can be made in like two hours um, on site if you have a crew of 24 and each person builds a module. So it's a very modular kind of a process. Okay. The other thing is we can also do the full build um, offsite, meaning at our facility, right? and then ship the finished modules. Uh, so there's a way to negotiate, like if we don't get the kind of service that you provide, which is the certification at the manufacturing place, we can take those modules and it will be as if it was all built on site following the standard procedure. Mm -hmm. Meaning, yeah, we get the all the inspection phases. And part of the thing that we're trying to negotiate right now, because right now, for example, in Kansas City, it would take three days for an inspector to show up for rough, and that's what we understand. Uh, so if we wanted to do this radical five-day build, that wouldn't happen. We're, we're sitting around for three days. Uh, right. For example, in St. Joseph, we were told that, oh, okay, well, you can actually schedule the inspector to arrive exactly at that time, so you could actually try for that five-day build period and still succeed after the foundation is in place. Um, now, what you're saying then, yeah, I mean, this would, so this would probably address the inspection schedule because it's like pre-certified or does it still... Well, if we can do it like that, I'm not quite sure um, how your product type would compare to a traditional... HUD approved manufactured home. Is there any like with a your home? There's a there's a plate that goes on the axle of the manufactured home that you know states when it was constructed and those pieces. I'm assuming that yours you don't have that. So yours is more of a it's it's a modular construction type, but it's not it's not, um, it's not going to be HUD. So so you would have to comply with local building codes. Um, mm -hmm. The thing that that we could do is um, you know the I codes are pretty much the same across the country, except everybody has different code cycles and different code amendments. And But for residential, you know, the IBC and the IRC are relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm. And so I would, and this is, I'm speaking out of school a little bit, but I, I believe that we could um, do some reviews at your, at your facility mm -hmm. um, where you're manufacturing these and depending upon where you're looking to send this product, we could probably go through some process where we would, you know, provide a certification that states that it, in our opinion, it meets all local building codes. Mm -hmm. And so that might be if, if a, if a local, you know, you're going to put these in some places, like you said, where they don't even have codes, like there are parts of Oklahoma, for example, um, they don't have codes period. And so there's nothing, you know, in those places we actually do FHA inspections because FHA lenders are required to do some sort of an inspection by federal law. Um, and if there's not a person who works for the county who can do the inspection, then we do it on the lender's behalf and just certify that it meets local building, you know, meets the, the statewide code for um, IRC and different things with the I codes. Um, but I, I'm rambling, but I, I think that we could probably set up a protocol where, um, you know, if you said that this Rosebud model 1905 is going to uh, where I live here in Woodstock, Georgia, uh, we could look up the local codes in Woodstock, Georgia. We could meet and virtually on the phone with the building official and say, "Look, we're working with um, with the manufacturer of a of a 
of a prefab home, and I hate to use the word pre prefab, that's not really even fair to it, but you know, a modular product, it's gonna, you know, we're gonna take pictures during, um, you know, the, the, the plan phase and show and send them a set of plans that we can stamp and we will stamp them and say that these meet whatever the building code is where this wants, where you wanna have this installed. And then, then you could work with your, your teams on the field where they're doing, you know, the, the five day install and they would probably, I would hopefully short circuit a lot of the uncertainties because if I'm in your position, I'm not sure what happens once they, once you leave Missouri and send it to another state, you know, you get some, some crazy building official who, you know, says, I don't like it, or this doesn't make sense to me. And they may be totally wrong. And without you having someone who says, well, I'm a, I'm a master code professional th certified through ICC. And, you know, I, in my position with safe bill, or with, with IBTS can uh, verify that this meets code. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just think there's a lot, and I, I would probably start next week um, reaching out within our team, a manufacturing team, to find out if there are any other processes that we can utilize to support you that will help you, um, you know, make sure that you don't run into any situations when you get to the the delivery stage. Okay. Whether it shows up as a bunch of container boxes or it shows up uh, and you have a staff that, and, and I, what I was really interested in was, um, is your vision at some point to use 3D printers to do some of the um, manufacturing on site of some of the building components? Are you thinking yeah, absolutely. that? Part? Absolutely, that's, that's like within two years we should have that. Uh, but the idea there is, yeah, wood plastic composites from trash, trash recycled plastic. So, so the four by nine modules or even just, okay, here's your stud now there's issues about structure you have to get that all certified for structural so probably a bunch sure. of testing and stuff like that but yeah yeah to print that at the module level so you're talking about the, at the four by nine module mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. yeah okay um okay so what what can i do next to well no what i'd like also to do is have a if you can send me a copy of our conversation because it'll yep. short circuit um, exactly. some of the questions that our team may have. So I can get that to everybody today, but what, what can I do to help you right now? Yeah, well, first question, just, just for longer term planning is, so what would this kind of service of certification cost per house? If we're selling a house, say a turnkey price of 200K, like with everything, land and everything, right. what fraction of that, that was kind of our Price structure is, but the price structure right now is 60k materials baseline. So okay. that's what we have to work with. So after you add up everything and connection, utility connections and everything, um, so what would be the cost for your service of certification? Like on a unit of one, like okay, say we got Rosebud, we want to do the do one in San Diego, and we want to certify there. Or now we we're building 50 per year, or uh, 500 per year. Th those are the kind of scales we're looking at. Okay. All right. So I'd have to figure out with our team, I'm, you know, in a traditional sense, you know, if we were to, if we were to come out and just charge you for an inspection, for example, we're probably looking at about $125 per trip. And then we would maybe do, um, you know, two inspections, but like a, like a four way rough, for example, that'd be four, four disciplines. So probably somewhere in the neighborhood about $500 for the inspection. But this is something what you're describing is something different and i just don't know yet how we would price that i need to check in with our team and see how we do the work right at the manufacturing site you know not only looking at what you have but then like you said going through the plan review process of looking at the the plans you have and certifying them to be located in different parts of the country okay based but on the codes okay um can you facilitate, so, so we're planning on four builds in Kansas City and St. Joseph area. So we're doing the Kansas City planning for October. Okay. Can you facilitate that so we can do it in five days? Because the thing was there, yes. they allow up to the foundation, but they said, no, you can't get a third party inspector for rough. They only allow for the first phase, which is foundation. So, okay, so so it's St. Joseph, what, what, what are the two communities? So St. Joseph, Missouri and Kansas okay. City, Missouri. Okay. Okay. Um, let me check with our team and find out what we have some we have some different uh, um, contracting vehicles we have throughout the 
Midwest, and one of them is working with the uh, Missouri Municipal League. And so we have a lot of standing contracts. We're not really third parties. We actually work on behalf of the cities. Oh. Um, okay. And so, and so I, I can check and see if, uh, if either KC or St. Joseph have us under contract already to do work as needed. Um, that would be you know one thing, but we could also talk directly with the uh, local building official and find out you know this is this is a unique thing, and so see if we can just utilize our inspectors at your cost to go out there and do the inspections because you know obviously our timetable is going to going to be adjusted to match your needs, and if you like if, like where we work right now with our communities, if you call if you call us on a Thursday in the morning, we'll be out there Friday to do the inspection. So we normally do next day inspections if we had to we could do same day in some locations but uh this is far enough out in advance in october that we could we could plan out just like you're planning out your schedule we could plan out our schedule and make sure that we have an inspector available to be there on the days that you need us to be there oh, okay. um yeah. and get all your stuff done so um yeah. so so that's what i'm saying like that piece of it is straightforward the only question would be um you know where do we how do we connect in with the local building official making sure that he uh, he or she will allow us to do the inspection and they'll accept it. I, I don't think that's going to, that should not be an issue, but I need to verify okay. for those two communities. And typical on-site inspections, what's that cost compared to having the city do it? What, what do, the, do you know what the city typically charges for an inspection? Like say there's like three or five inspections. I don't know. They normally uh, have it based on, um, on the permit fee itself. Like they'll charge you a, a fee for the permit and then that will include inspections normally. They don't normally break those out as a separate cost. Um, and I'll look back in our agreements. I, and this is you know, really off the back of the envelope. I think our pricing in our regional agreements we have in the Kansas City marketplace are somewhere around um, $850 for the package of inspections that you would need to do for a, for a home. And that you know, goes from the beginning to the end. I think that's roughly uh, seven or eight inspections all all together from foundation all the way through final inspection. Okay. Um, so, so that's where we would start our pricing. We'd have to look at uh, if there's anything in there with travel time or other things. I don't anticipate there would be much. So, um, and you know, we're interested in looking down the road with you too. So, yeah. you know, I don't, I'm not going to try to make a fortune on, on these, these uh, four sites you have in October. I'd like to make it work for you and work for us so that we can continue yeah. to work together. Oh, that would be great. Um, and as far as very immediately next week, uh, um, when we Thursday or Wednesday, Thursday or so, would you be able to send somebody out here, in Maysville, Missouri? Um, I understand that. So, so the the guy who responded in Kansas City, briefly, yeah, who I had the conversation on the phone, he said that I think he lives in St. Joseph, and is is he a possibility? Is he an inspector? Uh, do you know who you spoke with? Uh, yeah, that was. Um, let me just pull that up here. Was it was it Mark Manville? Um, let's see. Let me just look on the phone real quick here. Where... Sure. That was. Uh, Mark. No, I don't think it. It was Mark, but in an email. Did you respond to this by, um, through the form I sent? Yeah, what, what I did, we received, I received an email marketing form from our communications team that said there was an in inquiry on, from our webpage, which was what you provided, and then I emailed you directly, so that's... Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. So but I, but I, don't, I don't think the distance, okay, so Paul no, responded wait. you. No, wait, that's, no, no, that's, Paul did not respond, Paul Romer, I don't know, do you, do you know him, he's also a third party inspector? No, I don't. Probably. Okay. Since you're out in the East Coast, but uh, hold on, let me see. Sent yesterday. Um, 
I, I have the number on my cell phone. I, I, I'm not remembering the name. It w I don't know if... Does that help you any? I'm not sure. Um, let's see. That will be... I got a... What happened to this thing here? Uh, yesterday. July 7. Jesus. Okay, Kurt Skoog. Okay, yeah, Kurt is, um, he's one of, he's part of our sales team. Okay. Uh, he mentioned that the, oh yeah, the inspector who you mentioned, and his name is what? Mark Manville. Yeah, uh, he mentioned that Mark actually lives in St. Joseph, which is like 30 minutes from us. Okay. Um, so the question would also be, yeah, so immediately for next week... Uh, could we get somebody out here late in the week to actually just come in for an inspection? So we've built this all here, and is this all legit? Yeah. So, so you're look. So we would do just uh, even though it won't be, it, it won't be installed yet. This will be at your manufacturing facility. Well, so, so we're actually building the finishing. Yeah, up it's on building the a prototype. prototype. Yeah, the the prototype okay. is being built at the facility. Okay. Not not in a workshop setting. I mean, we have a workshop where we built some of the modules, but now it's actually in a side, just as if we were going through a regular inspection. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. We we could send Mark out and do a do a traditional um, building code inspection at I guess you're at at the rough end stage right now, or where yeah. are you? Yeah. yeah okay. Rough end stage. So so I mean, is he qualified to do the structural, electrical, and plumbing? Yes, he is. He's qualified to do all those inspections. Okay. Yeah. That would be okay. awesome. Yeah, so, um, okay, so job number one for me then is to um, coordinate with Mark Manville um, on a four-way inspection for you uh, some point in the middle of next week. And then I also need to get you um, some pricing for what that inspection will cost. And like I said, it's not going to be tremendously expensive. So um, we'll work with you on that. I'll get you, I'll e email you that information directly. And then... Um, Longer term is we need then to, uh, I'll talk to Mark and we'll figure out between uh, St. Joseph and Kansas City, Missouri, kind of what the process would be like for us to, to do some kind of third party work on your behalf. Because that way you'll have more of an on-call service versus being at the discretion of when the city can fit you in. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And, uh, and, and then the last thing is we need to uh, explore on our side, you know, what could we do from a national scale that would replicate what we do with HUD, where you know, once once a manufacturer home leaves um, leaves production, it's it meets code because of the way that HUD has it structured, and see what we could what we could do for you at your at your facility that would allow you to have mm -hmm. something similar, so that even though you might still have to go through an inspection process locally, that just might be what the city requires you'll be able to have some peace of mind and have something in your back pocket that says, if someone gives you a hard time, there's, they can call IBTS who did the inspection at your, in Missouri and said, yeah, we, I looked at everything on this model and it meets code. Mm -hmm. I, I reviewed the plans to begin with and then I went and we'd probably have to go back out and look at, um, well, I guess it would just be the plans, right? Because mm -hmm. you'd be shipping everything uh, to be put together locally and that's where they would do their other inspection, but we would be certifying the plans to meet local code. Yeah, I mean, except things like the foundation, we're not gonna ship the concrete, things like that, right? Right, right exactly, right. So that would have to be, so there, there would be local inspections nonetheless, but you would you would at least have a set of plans that could, you, know, you, might, you might have you know, five or six different versions of the Rosebud floor plans right. based upon local codes. Yeah. Okay, right. yeah, exactly. yeah, I think we can definitely do that. Okay, that sounds good. And then, um, as far as some immediate feedback, so like in that document uh, I sh sh screen shared, there's some specific questions. If you wanted to get a few questions reviewed, how would we go about that at this point? Like actually, I mean, we're getting materials this weekend and we're doing an install next week. Uh, we actually haven't gotten reviewed by anyone, any professional. Can we get that? Um, how would that look like? Can we get maybe like an hour conversation to go through sure. some of the details? Sure. Uh, yeah, we, I, think, be, the I think, I think, Mark would probably be the best. 
I mean, I'll help coordinate it, but I think Mark is going to be the, the right contact person locally because he's very knowledgeable about inspections and he does inspections all day long and he has a good, um, a good rapport with people. So mm -hmm. he's not, you know, he, he doesn't look at things as just black and white. He listens and can provide feedback. And, you know, this would be more like a design build conversation, not, yeah. not a, not a code conversation. You'd be looking for input from us about, you know, putting our hat on as a, as a plan reviewer, what would we, all right, what will we look for and what do we think is missing? Yeah, because literally, like, if he's not available to come on site, I mean, we do have everything as to be built within CAD. So we can just go through the screen share and show all the details. It's like LOD 300 level right now. Okay. So uh, that, that would also suffice. But yeah, just some basic questions like, um, yeah. Okay. Is your background in, in um, what, what is your background in? Uh, my background is actually in urban planning. So I'm mm -hmm. a planner by, by background and trade, and uh, mm -hmm. now I'm a manager and a director for IBTS. But um, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately what I went to school for was to plan cities. And you know, the kind of things that you're talking about is, to me, is very interesting because, uh, as you know, with the housing shortage and different things, you know, and now with California now allowing or almost forcing you to do granny flats in your in your backyard to really maximize the number of available housing units within the state um, mm -hmm. you know what you're doing is just going to explode uh, I know you're not the only ones doing it but um, this concept is one that I think is you know if you can get the part you're describing up front the regulatory piece completed and then you can get through the zoning part locally with local um, inspections as needed um, I think it'll make a great impact on the on the fabric of our country i mean it's just it's it's a problem i mean we and yeah. we see it all everywhere yeah i mean the difference is that unlike the manufacturing facility this this allows pretty much site build or unskilled build as well how important do you think that is that okay now we have the option because we're using simple build techniques you know just optimize for everything optimize really really integrated design so like right. the plumbing is as simple as possible electrical like for example running a utility channel around and the plumbing is super super tight and things like that uh, how important do you think that is the ability to not be reduced to a manufacturing facility and actually do it on site because to me it seems like okay we're using more generalized tool sets and skills we're not putting together any like complex manufactured right. parts it's all very basic right. stuff no, I think it's very important. I think what you're doing is you're short circuiting the process right now where there's some inefficiencies where yeah. you, you know, right now, and you know, like if I was to uh, purchase a lot here in Georgia, I want to put a manufacturer home on it for like a second use or, you know, by the lake or something like that. I'd have to go to a, to a dealer. I'd have to find a floor plan. I'd have to find the unit. I'd have to do a lot of different work. And then that what I'm hearing, uh, in fact, I heard this yesterday is a story that in a lot of states, there's a shortage of installers for manufactured housing. Yeah. Now, not so much in Georgia, but other states like in Nevada, where they're experiencing explosive growth, um, you can buy a house, you can buy a manufacturer home from a dealer. Um, you cannot get it installed in a timely manner. You might have to wait uh, a couple of months to have it on an installer schedule or be forced to use maybe a fly by night person who isn't, yeah. who isn't really uh, you know who can do it but you're not sure it'll be done right so mm -hmm. what you're describing you're going back to like you know the this the Sears catalog days of yeah. homes where yeah. someone would bring you a box on the train and um, you know then it was prefab material but this is you know if you can watch a YouTube video you can do Legos you can pull things together um, and you have the people to help with with the weight and the structure of moving things with cranes I'd imagine to get things onto the second story or whatever you have to do I I think actually, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, really. Um, and actually, yeah, this is. I think compared to the Sears home, I think this is a simple and optimized version of the Sears home. Like, I, I think people did have a lot of issues putting them together. Oh yeah, I'm sure they did. I'm not sure they they were like designed with the concept of okay, you need the le least skill and just total optimization. I think it was more like standard homes, except you can build them yourself, and the skill set was not necessarily right that much lower well and I, th I think people back then were you know it was a different time in our country and there were a lot more people who were available who who could do something like that on their own nowadays people like me who uh 
watch YouTube to fix everything in their house. We don't have yeah. those backgrounds. But I think what you're describing, I think I could probably, my wife and I and other people working together could, could assemble a home like you're describing. Yeah, and uh, the concept that we're trying to solve for is we've seen the difficulty of labor, so we're actually starting an apprenticeship program next March, that's, uh, that's our plan, so that we actually create those cohorts of 24 where <laughs> none of them have to be a specialist. Trash. Everyone's going to be able to do all the trades, uh, and in the first place, we simplify it radically so that if you're building this from plans and you've got a standard design, then it's a different game. So we're just trying to get all the inefficiencies out. And the growth, the development for this is actually we're going to aim to do the same. So we actually developed open source compressed earth block presses, and we've done that a bit. But we're going to aim for the compressed earth block version of the house on the same time scale. So that means some serious optimization there in terms of the workflow and and machines that work and are very efficient. So that's that's the future plans there. Yeah. yeah. Well, let, let's do this. Let's um, let's just kind of agree that um, if it makes sense to you with Mark, you know, at his at his pay rate and where we are right now, I, we can just do an hourly rate of one twenty five. I won't. You know, we're not going to work and round down. We're going to give you exact hours, and this will include Mark's time to be out at your location in Missouri, um, mm -hmm. and then also to do, like you said, some. I'll double check with Mark, but I think he'd probably be amenable to help you with some of your. Um, design type questions from a code perspective you know we just like always I, we've done this before we've done a we've done pre-code reviews where uh, an applicant would submit a set of plans to us and say before we submit to the city please review these plans as if you are the city and give us any comments so that our engineers and architects can correct them before we submit because the city will take three four weeks to get us comments we'd rather knock out all the low-hanging fruit and make sure that we've you know we don't waste our time with this so those two things, uh, I'll call Mark as soon as we hang up and get him, you know, make sure that we can schedule this for next week. And then um, I'll talk to our kind of our manufacturing inside the plant team and see kind of how we can work with you further down the road about the issues related to, um, you know, the actual designs and the plans. And then yeah. the third piece is uh, reaching out to the two different communities we've talked about and, and see if we could actually do inspections on your behalf in, in the city and have them accepted. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and as far as uh, regarding Mark, yeah, I mean, if he's available anytime up to Monday and Tuesday, I mean, if he's available today or tomorrow, I mean, love to just hop on a one hour conversation. I think that could nail all the answers that we're. Just okay. If he's available, yeah. Okay. So please that sounds know, great. Please let me know uh, if you get a hold of him. See okay. when he would be available, so whether we can count on that or, or not before we actually do the build. Otherwise, we'd still want to have him show up for the inspection. Okay. okay. Sounds very good. That would be great. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, Marchin, thank you. I really appreciate the conversation, and uh, I'll get back with you shortly. Okay. Thank you, Chris. All right. Thank you. Bye. Take care.